That night, Charlie, without his beloved rubber duck, just suddenly goes squeaky the whole night, and the other two cannot sleep. <laughs> so, uh, welcome back to Pikmin 3. In the last day, uh, due to the horror of Charlie losing his rubber ducky, we got that exchange. Squeaky. And, uh, and then we had Brittany slapping Charlie in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> then Charlie wakes up, Oh, Lamar, get back here! <laughs> <laughs> and then Louis, his face pressed against the glass of the S's, Drake gets inside, stares at Charlie, and then just slaps him and he leaves. <laughs> Alright, so in the last day, we actually were trying to track down where Louis went off to. Unfortunately, not only did he rob us of our juice, but we had to go and start gathering other fruits while we were trying to get a hint of where he went off to. He robbed us of our juice and he robbed us of our excitement. <laughs> Unfortunately. And so today we're gonna actually go and see where the hell Louie actually went off to. We're gonna start with only five blue Pikmin, 65 winged Pikmin, because I haven't shattered this game enough. I feel like the game's getting ready to push back. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like the game itself didn't actually like that I did any of that in the previous day. But that's alright. I actually go out of my way here just to grab this data file because I forgot to. That probably would have been useful info like a while ago. And uh, I'm trying to have Alf punch the Wallywog, but unfortunately it was too evasive. And I said I didn't have time. Next time. Believe it or not, we actually have 12 of the 17 fruits in Garden of Hope. Splash. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> I threw a Brittany over there so that way she can get the data file for me while I'm currently telling the yellows to go and start breaking down this wall. Because believe it or not, at least for me, this was actually one of the fruits that I forgot in one of my attempts and I was wondering like, where is it? And it was so obvious, but I just missed it on top of everything else. That or just make all your Pikmin eat it. Yeah, yeah, like, once you have a squad of a hundred, you could just have them charge, I'm pretty sure, from practically any angle, and you'll be fine. Like, I know you can't do that in Pikmin 1, you absolutely have to attack them from behind. I like how the meter is just going crazy, like, what are you doing to me?! <laughs> uh, uh, fixing. Breaking. <laughs> oh, oh, wow, I didn't actually notice that detail, it just goes... Yeah. Yeah, it would have been cute if they had, like, the noise from Pikmin 2 when you get all the treasures in a sub-level. I like to call this one a cool little slow-mo effect, that was just the game. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't really have anything to worry because this was smaller. And actually, in another one of my attempts, I had the whole squad get lit on fire because none of them were red, and the game just lagged <laughs> until I whistled them. It was honestly kind of cool, but honestly, like, a little annoying. <laughs> One cool detail, actually, all the Pikmin that got caught on fire, their flowers burned off and they're back to leaves. Yeah, that's actually, uh, that's actually a bad thing for me. But, uh, you know what? We'll be alright. They won't. Yeah, well, the rocks are not gonna be okay. So I leave the yellows to start digging out because not only do I want to get that fruit, but they're actually the best diggers. You're probably wondering, hey, uh, how, you haven't been using reds in, like, ever. Why is that? Well, it's not that they're useless. They do have their uses. It's just more that, despite the heavy amount of reds that I have, I don't really need them for the most part, for the majority of the puzzles I'm going to solve. It's kind of like how in Pikmin 2, where, like, I always had reds on me, but for the most part, combat was handled by purples, and I had the other four Pikmin types doing their thing. They're basically, by the time you get the other Pikmin, they're more or less kind of like fodder. But that being said, they still have their uses in this game. They're not, like, completely, like, obsolete in 2. In this game, they actually do make some boss fights a little easier. I just personally don't use it. Also, I only had the five blue Pikmin to grab that fruit, just so that I could switch it to the winged Pikmin, just so that they could lift it. And that's the only use we're gonna get out of the blues today. 
believe it or not, switching to the wing Pikmin actually makes that easier because I don't have to lift up that gate. The pink Pikmin, like, because there's a gate that the pink Pikmin are only allowed to lift up. They intended for you to use your blues to gather that and then just have the pink Pikmin lift up the gate. But the pink Pikmin are on their own little, like, track and they just go over that anyway. <laughs> You're like on your own kick of, what if the eagles brought the ring to Mordor? <laughs> but you started from the beginning with that thought? <laughs> it's just it's just funny, because like, okay, but then the Pikmin have their own track. That had to have been a design choice, right? They, couldn't, they didn't just automatically just skip over that. I feel like they had to be intentional. If not, Jesus, why did you put the blue Pikmin back other than because they were in the <laughs> last two? But, uh, anyways, so about what I was saying with the Reds, they do actually make some boss fights go easier. That being said, we're gonna throw Alf and Brittany over here. This is the only part of the map that we haven't explored yet. And that cup is totally structurally sound. <laughs> yeah, it totally looks like it would fall apart because of how incomplete it is. I believe there's actually a, a little tiny hole in the side, actually, that you could still, like, see. Yeah. But because we're the size of a quarter, because of how much we weigh, it doesn't really matter, I guess. So, the Aristocrab here, the reason why I have my rocks is because you can break its claw off, and you don't really need that many. You can just keep pelting it with rocks, and I actually recommend fighting this thing with a small squad, because if I brought my pinks, then it would have focused on getting them and eating them. And if you don't stop the claw in time, then it's gonna eat them. And this is actually the second secret file that I've found. That's why it has two on it. Yeah! In every area of this game, there are two secret files. I mentioned it in, the, in a previous day on what they were about, but basically, every time you play this game, you have these data files that are randomized. They're always in the same areas, but the codes and numbers are different. What this was, if you would gather all of the codes, you would have access to a, uh, a website that you would access through the Wii U browser, and there you would input the code and you would get a secret file from Captain Olimar. On one hand, it seems really cool, but the thing was, is like, every single data file was actually the same, because you would get a data file of him in a different location. And so, I'm not going to be going for these, because you can see the data files online, because people have already found them. And look, we even found the Pikmin 2 ship. It's in more of a wreck than it was before, even though it was gold-plated, but now it's not. Good riddance. <laughs> in fact, even Olimar's like, oh, I hate this thing so much, it's an insult to my piloting. <laughs> like, wow, Olimar. <laughs> Just went in. I think he said it insults his piloting, like it's actually talking to him and telling him he sucks. You know what? I, I would believe that. <laughs> so, I bring only the pinks with me here. And I also bring the rocks. And we start throwing our rocks at this... thing. You're hurting my rock ass. <laughs> Who's knocking on my door? <laughs> Brittany adjusts her glasses. I see, it's an ass. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow she adjusts it to her helmet. So, uh, this fight. This is the Quaggled Mire Clubs. He's awful. Yeah, this is the hardest fight in the game. I'm dead serious. Why is this the hardest fight in the game? Well, uh, never mind the fact that I'm using a strategy that I do not recommend for first time players or beginners because coming here with pretty much only pinks and rocks is a death sentence, but believe it or not, the best way to fight them actually involves the wing pigment. So, the reason why this fight is a pain in the ass is because we are fighting on muddy terrain, and every time it takes a giant step with its three legs, a bridge or two, maybe four to three legs, with its big legs, when it, every time it makes a stomp, it makes like a puddle, and your Pikmin, because they're not blues, are able to drown in that. On top of that, when it stomps around, it has the potential to actually stomp on your Pikmin in mid-attack. 
So if you command your Pikmin to charge, and it's just about to start lifting its foot, there's a chance that your Pikmin are going to drown and get crushed at the same time because of the way it's moving around. Yeah, it does look like that they won't be crushed to death necessarily, but they will be stuck in the water and they'll drown that way. Yeah, and if you can't get them in time, or if you're whistling for them and they're just stuck in an animation, or they're just in a loop where they're just drowning and, like, getting knocked back, they're just gonna die. So, what we do is we attack its foot with its, with the pink pigment and we use our Ultra Spicy Spray. We just have to keep repeating this. This fight is honestly a pain, because even its center makes a giant puddle, so you want to be careful. The best strategy i found is to just start attacking the nearest foot little cups you can. Your spray should, for the most part, last for the entire fight, depending on how much you come with here, here with. Three is minimum, like, I recommend having at least three for this one. In speedruns, they actually accomplish this fight in 30 seconds to a minute. Honestly, even the way you have to do it for the speedrun, it looks easy, but it's it's easier said than done. Like, yeah, sure, you watch it and you're just like, oh, I can do that. And then you try it and you realize, oh, you have to do like extremely precise timing and things like that. Even like casually, even before using this strategy, which I actually don't recommend unless you're experienced. This is a pain in the ass, even if you come with a big squad, because of how easy you can lose any of your Pikmin. On top of, like, the stomping and the puddles, there's also the tongue. I see what you did! <laughs> Mommy. And after defeating the hardest boss, we get Louie and a melon. <laughs> I wonder if Captain Olimar would be offended that these guys think Louie is him. Yeah, he'd be like, first of all, do I look that ugly? Secondly, I am way smarter than them. Even the game is like, look at this shitty ship. <laughs> look at this piece of crap. I would have loved if she started interrogating right there while slapping him. <laughs> Where's her juice? Ugh! Where's her... He didn't answer. So, uh, I came here with... I didn't come with 65 pink Pikmin, because remember, some of the other Pikmin were, like, gathering fruits for me. But I came here with, I want to say, 40-something or so. I had just enough to pick up that melon. Yeah, you lost half in the fight. Yeah. And Louie, thankfully, I still had some rocks. I only brought 10 rocks with me, I only lost 5. Which, honestly... That was not as bad as I thought, but that fight was pretty rough. So, remember when I was talking about reds earlier? I honestly would recommend first time playing, you bring some reds. Because that fight is not fun. However, if you can manage to pull it off the way speedrunners do, then yeah, the fight shouldn't be too bad. It's just difficult even if you know the strategy, because your timing has to be exact. I feel like I would attempt to do it the speedrun way, but with how I am, every time I go in a boss fight, like, my anxiety just kicks in. <laughs> For me, it was more like I really didn't want to practice that fight because I hate that fight in general. Yeah. So I was just like, you know what, whatever happens, happens, and... Well, on the other hand, since I already make a lot- I already grew a bunch of wing Pikmin before, it wasn't that big of a deal. So, uh, yeah, remember those, uh, bridge pieces back that I never started building? Again, winged Pikmin. They just- they just laugh at obstacles. They don't care. You know, all of these strategies that I'm doing with the pinks, I feel like- I don't know if they would be patched out per se, but I think they'd probably be like, well, it would probably be an insult to the player if we have these winged Pikmin, if they weren't able to just fly over the water. Because I know I would be pretty upset where it's like, wouldn't it be cool if your pink Pikmin could just negate the bridge? And they like patch that out or they just couldn't. Like, your wing Pikmin are too dumb to go over water all of a sudden. 
I feel like if anything, if they wanted to keep the versatility of the Wing Pikmin, they would at least add more obstacles. Yeah, because they thought of a few with the Arachnoid Spiderweb, but other than that, you don't really have many actual problems. In fact, I'm actually struggling to remember the last time I used Red Pikmin. <laughs> And now that we got the last of the fruits, as well as we retrieved Louie... Now to juice Louie. <laughs> we could try. And again, it's so fun spinning him. <laughs> Ground control to Major Tom. <laughs> He's just going... Pete! <laughs> Pete! <laughs> I also like how he gets reclassified from Hokitation to Food Thief. The species Food Thief. <laughs> ah, dunk on the rubber duck. <laughs> dunk on Charlie there. Like, oh yeah, and a children's toy for children who are not grown adults, you man-child. So, uh, now that we've officially completed the Garden of Hope, I'm gonna spend the last of our time farming some blues. This is the last time we're coming here? Last time we're coming here. We've done everything. We These are the last five fruits. That'll make it 17 out of 17 fruits. If you remember in day two, there was an electrical, like, wall back where we first found Brittany. Like, across the bridge. The reason why I never broke it open is because you remember when when we fought the second Crawdad with the grapes near that other weight puzzle that I had completely ignored? Of course. Well, basically, if you break the electric wall from that side, you basically end up on the back way of it. The reason why I didn't show that off or bother to do it is because it's better to come through from the front, where I did with Charlie, so that way you can get the grapes and you can push the shopping bag, so that way you can just cross it. Because if you go through from the back, then you won't have access to the shopping bag, and you can't, like, trick your winged Pikmin into pushing the bag for you, you're just stuck. So if you gather the fruits, they have to go the long way. That's why I didn't show it off. But in case you're wondering what that other electric wall had behind it, nothing. <laughs> I forgot it was there. <laughs> it was nothing worthy of note. Uh, yep, you two are still with me. <laughs> she, like, eyes Charlie. Why couldn't you gun eaten by the Myerclops? <laughs> and he's like, what's a Myerclops? Don't worry about it. You look like you've seen hell. Yeah. Yeah. I like that they look wet from the rain. Yeah, that's a neat little graphical detail. Despite the Wii U being the Wii U, I mean, it did have, you could do some pretty cool stuff with it. It was graphically competent. Yeah. I mean, certainly an improvement over the GameCube, but, I mean, they had a two gener- they had an entire, like, generational gap between that with the Wii. Sure, they re-released one and two for Wii, but there was no, like, official Pikmin game for Wii. Would you get a lot of juice out of an avocado? I have no idea. Just, yeah, I'm sure it has juice. It's moist. I don't know if you would get a noticeable amount out of it, though. Feels like it's more solid. So now that we got our juice back from Louie, on top of the extra fruits, look at how much juice we have. We have 56 days to mess with. Absolutely triple the amount that you would need to beat this game. See you at the end of the game in 2020. <laughs> Where I just mess around for the next 56 days until I get serious. The whole time I'm just lying here. Ah. <laughs> Before that fight where I lost 20 winged Pikmin, we had 7 dead Pikmin, and that fight, let's see, added about... I counted 21. Yeah, 21. There right, I was 20. I'm not good at math. Even though we lost a bunch of Wing Pikmin because I farmed a lot, it's not that big. It didn't even make a dent in, like, how much Wing Pikmin I still have. Yeah. That's not the reason why I farmed a bunch of Wing Pikmin, by the way. It wasn't because I wanted to try that strategy, which I don't recommend. It was really because, well, I have the extra time and I just genuinely find the Winged Pikmin to be extraordinarily useful. Because I can negate bridges, I can 
make them grab fruits that they shouldn't. You can negate earth, wind, fire, and water. <laughs> and poison, if that was a thing. Now that we've cleared out the Garden of Hope completely, now that we got Louie back, now we're just gonna try to actually interrogate the guy. Unless he just forces us to land in, like, distant tundra and we have to chase him again and he gets eaten again and we have to fight another boss. So that way, we can interrogate Louis to see, hey, so where is Olimar anyway? Because we still don't know where he is. We found a lot of his data files and we saw that the ship from Pikmin 2 is completely out of commission, but he's not in the Garden of Hope. Which must be horrifically terrifying for him because he's not even near a base. He's just out there. Yeah. So then what's the plan for day 11? Well, since Louis's gonna basically let us know what's coming next, he basically unlocks the final area for us. We're not gonna go there just yet. The final area is entirely the final boss fight, right? Pretty much. It's the last field, in quotes. But, uh, it's basically a straight shot to the final boss. And because I want to get the best ending, and because I'm gonna get all the fruits, I actually want to revisit the other three areas still. Because even though I'm literally only missing two pieces of fruit from Twilight River, I imagine that's going to be an extremely short day where I mix, I compile it with another day. I'm just going to attach that to another one. Because my primary goal right now is to go back to the Tropical Wilds because that place has had the least amount of work. We've only been there once. I believe in Distant Tundra I'm only missing six pieces of fruit there too. The, the majority I'm missing is from Tropical Wilds. So I would say when I'm done with Tropical Wilds, then like attach whatever little bit I have of Twilight River into the beginning or end of whatever day we start Distant Tundra in, because there's not really much left to do there either. But we should hopefully be done within the next four to five parts. Yeah, I'd say so. Like I said 13 at first because I was accounting for like, all right, there might be like an extra day or two where we have to build bridges, but I didn't realize how time consuming the bridges actually were until like I did the let's play again because there are ways to skip having to spend extra days but they require you to do precise tricks that I wasn't willing to learn or practice and I felt that it would kind of be unfair to the game for me to just basically glitch my way through it because I do like using like glitches and tricks like oh look I got an extra little bit of spray or like hey look I skipped the bridge but I feel like something where it's, oh this basically just makes me skip half the map I feel like that's just too much, especially in a Let's Play where I'm trying to show off as much as I can. Mm -hmm. Like, I, it's cool, and I'm pretty sure if I dedicated myself to enough time to practice those, I could easily glitch my way to, like, getting a Scorned Maestro early. But I personally just don't feel the need to do that. I will say if I knew some of the skips for the final level, I would have totally done them. <laughs> oh, there are some. Whether or not I'll actually be doing them, undecided, but... I can at least maybe demonstrate, like, the normal way, and then, like, all right, here's a thing that basically makes this only take two minutes. Because <laughs> for me, I think it took three in-game days. <sighs> wow. I think first time took me about the same, too. But yeah, that's why I had to res raise the estimation. World record for getting all fruits is ten in-game days. I believe for any percent, I want to say six or seven. Because with any percent, like, all you have to do is basically rescue Louie again, and then he unlocks the last area for you, and you can just go there whenever you want. And then when you do that, and you clear that, you beat the game. Well, join us next time for when I come up with something else creepy for Charlie to do overnight. <laughs> I mean, I do like this little trend. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it started when we got him. <laughs> <laughs> well, next time we see you guys, we're going to be back in the Tropical Wilds, my least favorite area in the game. That's not going to be for a few weeks, though. Pikmin 3 is going to go on a short break while we actually go back to do the original Pikmin. Yoshi's going to be doing the six-day challenge, so that should be maximum six parts, minimum five. Depends on if he wants to combine any of the days into the same part, but... We're going to be doing that to celebrate the channel's ninth anniversary on April 13th. Pikmin was actually the first LP that Yoshi and I did, just the two of us, back on our old LP channel. And we're going to be commentating some of those parts live. We're going to be having a stream. So if you're watching this after April 13th, that will also be up. So look forward to the Pikmin 1 six-day challenge, and then we will resume Pikmin 3 when that's complete.